Hi, I'm Kingy. And I'm T-Bot. And uh, we're from Nerdslayer.com. Uh, as it's uh, today is the uh, 15th of November, uh, 2013. Uh, the day the PlayStation 4 came out for those lucky bloody Americans. <laughs> Damn you. And I hope you're having fun with them. We're very nostalgic, as, yes. as always, towards thought, this generation. Yes, we thought we'd uh, look, uh, have a little chat about our favourite moments from this gen. So, over um, to you. What was your... Uh, one of, some of your favourite moments? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start it off with something that I think uh, happened a lot this generation and I think that stealth was done very well this Do generation you know what? and, I and gave me stealth. so many moments that yeah. just made me so happy. Um, ones that stick out, there were moments in Dishonored where every little mechanic mm. that they had, they had so many, so many intricate little mechanics that worked beautifully on their own but then you could put them together and create these moments that made you feel like such a badass. These things that they were really helping you out and holding your hand but you felt like you did all of it. Like even though it was set up, the game is set up to do that, you felt like such a cool assassin, you know? And like, uh, I don't think that happened well. before. Splinter Cell, yeah, a perfect example. Um, really enjoyed that game. It's, it really holds your hand but it really makes you feel like you did it absolutely everything you uh, that, that, Yeah, well, I, I, even if it is holding your hand, if it makes you feel like a badass, exactly. then it's great. It's, yeah. it's worth, worth having you in. The mechanics just, just flow together so well. Um, Deus Ex, Human Revolution, was a fantastic was a comeback mm. for, for the series. Mm. A lot of, obviously a lot of people were sceptical mm. because a lot of fans hold it very close to their hearts but I had so much fun. Um, one of the few games this generation I played through multiple times um, and also Thousand G as well. Which <laughs> I, I played it when I got it through on the PlayStation Network. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't bad on there, it had some faults on the PlayStation version but yeah, I enjoyed the game. Yeah, definitely. I only played through it once though. And like I said, moment. I wouldn't, you know, we're talking about moments. I think that definitely had some great, great moments. I think that was the the, the sort of turning point when um, stealth started coming back big time, and um, and then it was everywhere. But but even though it was everywhere, it was still done really well every yeah. time. It was yeah. it was it's great, and I hope to see more of it with Thief on the next generation. Hopefully, we'll see. Well, I love the original Thief more. on the PC. Yes, yeah, it's right a back fantastic there. game. Yeah. I, mean, I think oh, one of my what, um, the first time I started playing Ge uh, Gears of War, and then the the fact that they had a chainsaw on the gun and you got <laughs> to rip through somebody, holy crap! Whoever thought of that, you're a bloody genius. There's, there's something about <laughs> the over-the-top violence. It was ridiculous, the, but amazing. Yeah, the, the, it was like big were, bulking guys in space armor. And like they're giving us, it was like they were giving us a slap in the face and saying, "We are not, we are not just going to take it easy on this on this but, console. But it, we can do this. So we're going to throw blood in your face. We're going to make it overly violent for mostly no reason." It was also the game that, um, you know. Put focus onto third person shoot games and had that amazing cover mechanic. It that defined worked so it. well. Yeah. And then every other game copied that. P people something. forget these things. I mean, people forget that things like Halo uh, back on the original Xbox sort of helped um, funnel the first person shooters it, it defined, on consoles. It, it, it defined how you would play uh, yeah. first person shooters. People on forget console. about these stars. And Gears of War definitely defined how cover mechanics should work. The Snap 2 cover mm. mechanic, which Much was, perfectly. and Blind Fire as well, things that yeah. worked so, so fantastically on it and became industry standard because of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it worked really I, I, really I well. can remember running someone through with a chainsaw, uh, the Lancer, yeah. for the it's first just time. another blood going all over your screen. Yeah, there. it was. <laughs> like, and it and sounded then, great. And you stand there being shot for a few seconds before sna snapping to cover because you're sitting there going, oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> why, what, what is this? What I'm used to Mario mm. and Sonic, and now you're throwing these. You know, blood and guts. Mm. A splatter house, I remember, used to used to put, like shock me when I was a kid. And this is just <laughs> it is the <laughs> natural the progression. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Um, what else? There was a moment in Red Dead Redemption, which always stands out, which was just walking slowly, walking my horse up a, a steep hill and just coming over a verge to see the the sun. Oh wow! And just a, yeah. just just a landscape shot, and I think it was it's probably the first time, at least in a in a while, that. I'd stopped in a game to sort of take it all in, you know, and and it it looks it's suddenly the argument of games are art. There's no question, you know, it's mm. it's it's absolutely beautiful, and and people have gone through the effort of making something that isn't actually part of the game 
feels so powerful. You know, when these when these details are added, it's, it it was mind blowing. Now, with that with that uh, with that thought about you know taking in the view and stuff, I was doing that all the time in Uncharted. You just yes, and, and especially on Uncharted Two as well. Just the snow levels. And, oh, it was just it was absolutely fantastic. The amount of times in Uncharted where I stopped playing, mm -hmm. thinking it was a cutscene, just taking it all in, mm -hmm. and then realised that. It was up to me to continue it's such a beautiful game. Nathan Drake. Yeah, uh, well, it, it, the the Uncharted games uh, are my favourite games, uh, series of games this generation, closely followed by Mass Effect. But I think, I think Uncharted definitely set a, a standard. I think I think Mass Effect set a standard for storytelling. For storytelling, mm. certainly, and and, uh, and, and and the way the characters interact with each other within the game. You know, the little responses that they made. Yeah. Little remarks like the Marco Polo thing, and if you went into the water. Um, yeah. Things like that. I mean, a lot of games. Like, have you played uh, Beyond Two Souls? I haven't yet. No. Uh, that's really good. And that's, I think that takes uh, acting within games to the next level. In the same way that uh, Heavy Rain did for for the near the near the start of the. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely building on from what Heavy Rain did. I mean, Heavy Rain had some problems. It, it was a quake game. Yeah, I really I enjoyed Heavy Rain, but this is much much better. Yeah. 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 I, another. Insane moment for me, where he's trying to get those damn agility orbs in crack crack down. Down. <laughs> <laughs> And They, they named orbs. that game very well because oh, I just wanted to keep going back and finding those orbs. And I was um, so many times I'd be walking around uh, my local town and I'd be seeing green things on top of buildings. <laughs> and yeah, you, you, know, like, oh, oh, you know, no, I'm not, I'm not in game. I had the same thing. <laughs> I had the same thing with achievement points. So oh yes, I'd, the popping. I would be, yeah, I'd be hearing dings. Yes, I would, I would yes. be hearing dings I had that in my all head. The time. Mm. I, I used, I never used to care about achievements. They were so, so clever. I never used to care. And then I believe you challenged me to beat your score in a small space of time. Yes. Um, and after yes. a few six games, I'm not <laughs> proud of playing and not proud <laughs> of Thousand and Ging like Hannah Montana. I, <laughs> I beat it, but I was hooked because it, it suddenly. It suddenly made unappealing games a lot more appealing. It made games that I wanted to put down um, because of aspects of them a lot easier to carry on with, and and it just makes me so glad that I did. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think I always use Portal Two as my example. Portal Two has achievements attached to going out and finding audio logs that uh, you would not see otherwise, which is fantastic. I mean, that's like, exactly uh, what they should be used for to push people forwards, like to do other the, things. Yeah, Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's genius, um, and achievements are definitely an incredible part of, of this generation, and it's uh, probably the part that's affected me the most, whether I wanted to do or not. I mean, I'm a bit I, I'm a bit fatigued on the Assassin's Creed series, but when I first played Assassin's Creed, running across the top ropes and then doing an assassination, that, that, the that first was, time we did that, yeah, yeah um, so much fun. Keeping on Assassin's Creed, this is definitely a moment for me. Uh, the first game I ever got on the the 360 was Assassin's Creed. As soon as he put his hand in a handhole on a, on a building, mm. he I was trying to tell him to go up, he went a bit to the right so that uh, Altair went a bit to the, right, to the right so he could grab a yeah. specific yeah. nook. Yeah. Um, it just, it seems it seems it, like tiny now, but that blew my mind. The fact that they, they rendered it and animated it so that it looked legit and he would move very naturally every, every hand um, that he put down. It was, mm. I, I remember at that point, because I'd gone two years previous not really playing any games, um, and I only got an Xbox because I didn't know what I wanted to to get, you know, for that occasion. I remember you playing Halo Three a lot. It? Yeah, I was I was pretty obsessed with Halo. Sticky grenades is another moment. <laughs> as soon as I realised I could stick a grenade to somebody and laugh myself stupid, watching their bum glow blue before exploding into oblivion. <laughs> good times. Yes, yeah, definitely Very good times. Um, I remember playing through Dead Space. And I had to go through my surround sound, and just having the little monsters go around. I'm like, crap, where are they? Where yeah. are they? And you like go around the corner. You didn't know what when things were going to attack or not, and just just realizing to myself, this is how Resident Evil should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And was. Uh, well, was yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Dead Space Two, the hunters, I believe they were called, the little Velociraptor style things that sort mm. of, they peek around a corner and you get a glimpse of them and you turn and by the time you turn all you see is them hiding again and then they jump out and, and yes. leg it at you. That was yeah. a moment, that was a moment that made me absolutely cack myself. Doing the zero G stuff in it was quite cool. That, was, that they, was a really good, uh, was really awesome. good stuff. Um, yeah. I'm going to say Bioshock was probably in my top three. Um, kindly? Because, <laughs> because, <laughs> spoilers, so much. because 
the the little sister um, decision. Yeah, um, it, that really affected me. It was, me. it was. I didn't understand it. The, I'd never had it before. I got there. I'd read all about people um, having to to choose this this moral choice, and I never understood. I never, it never came to me that I would be able to sit there and care enough. You know, it was always a game, and it was like I'll do whatever gets me the most points. Of course, I'm going to harvest them for Adam. Well, I won the Adam. I, but I got I there, and I couldn't do it. No, I couldn't. I could not I bring did, myself I, to do it. I did. I think I did it once, so I could get that achievement point. You're an evil person. <laughs> yeah. For but an then, achievement point. But then I, uh, I, uh, I cancelled out and then reloaded my save, so I didn't have that. <laughs> so I could get the achievement. But it was. Yeah, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I was just like, I can't do this. It's a little girl. I it can't was, do that. And the fact that they're standing over the big daddies, saying, mm. "Get up, daddy," and stuff. Like, Mr. Bubbles. It was, I mean, yeah, there's so much emotion to it, and yeah, it was, it I was so well done. I Even in a game it. where every time you die, you come back to life in a chamber mm. around the corner, which should should be so unimmersive. It should suddenly make you not care at all because mm. it, 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 it make, it's shouting, "I'm a game at you." But it doesn't matter. As soon no. as you see that little girl's no. face, animated so well and rendered beautifully. And then, and then when you when you were close to them, they're like, "Oh, thank you." And you're like, yeah. "Oh, the yeah, I did good. I did good." Well. <laughs> I, I, I've seen the animation of taking it and the, yeah. the terror on their face, yeah. trying to claw themselves away from it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how people how people can do it. No, I couldn't do that. For either. achievement points, <laughs> no less. You would have done it. <laughs> I, 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 I might go back and <laughs> get some achievement points. Yeah. Um, talking about immersion and bringing yourself into the game, and everything is. Um, I think that's been a huge part of this uh, generation. Yeah. The actual act, acting within 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 games. Yeah, um, people are taking it more seriously. People, yeah, people yeah. are taking voice actors in games a lot more seriously. It's it's becoming something that people admire as much as I was, live actors now. I was emotionally invested in The Last of Us. And oh my god! Try looking after, trying to look after Ellie. I know she yeah. could look after herself most of the time, but you know, if she got attacked, I was like, you fuck it. Yeah, you get you get off that and. There was there were so many moments when mm. I would be I would go from sitting down to kneeling down to standing up because I couldn't I just couldn't sit still I, the idea that that she was in danger and there's a moment where she goes off on her own she she drops a ladder down for you like mm. uh, twenty odd times in the game she she'll go up high you'll you'll send her up she'll drop a ladder and you'll climb up and that's the way it's always been the near nearer the end of the game you send her up and she doesn't drop the ladder and there was just this moment of panic. Uh, just through my entire body, I, I need to get to Ellie. I need to, and again, it's just crazy that the, that the game can do this to you. Mm. But I was, I just, they just, so clever at storytelling, Naughty Dog. So yeah. clever at Very the good. way that they yeah. they structure and manipulate you as a, as a person to care about these these characters. Another game that really made me care was The Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, and again, using little girls. This is their technique. Yeah. They use little girls to pull out our heartstrings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Yeah, it's just it's just the way uh, they made you uh, care about the characters. Clemmy and yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or Clemmy. Yeah, and uh, you know, and making you feel like your choices had a lot of consequences. Because yeah. when you actually look at the game, you didn't have that much choice of what, apart from kind of like who died or who didn't. Uh, but, at certain points as well, because yeah. it typically came full circle. Uh, yeah, eventually. exactly. Yeah, but it made you feel like you yeah. had every decision that's that important and. In the same way that Day um, awful, Deus Ex was was pretty limited, but it did a very good job of making you feel like you had freedom to take it how you wanted. That did a very good job of making you feel like you had complete control of the story, mm -hmm. even though um, Telltale are, are right there forcing you down a, a pretty narrow path. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're you're um, you know touching and, and evolving the narrative, even though you're not, and that is. That is, in my books, that is just as good as giving us the sort of freedom Mass Effect did. Mm -hmm. um, as long as I feel like it's my story, I'm, you know, I don't care. Mass Effect made me feel like, uh, made me feel like I was controlling the story. It was my destiny, and I was controlling who I was friends with and who I wasn't, and this who was going to die. Yeah, uh, and it's such a massive achievement that they managed to get your, you know, the progression from what things were happened in the first game all the way up to the very end yeah. of the last How many of the years third game. Has that been? I can't remember now. It was a good, like, good four, good four, four years. years I think. Yeah, uh, you know, absolutely it's, it's amazing. I really cared about those characters, uh, the people that are on my ship and stuff. And like, there was there was one moment, like, might be slightly spoilerific for you if you haven't played through it, but um, there's a bit with uh, Tally's race. What was Tally's race? I can't remember now. I can't remember. I just remember. Um, but uh, Tally. Uh, because of a choice I made in Mass Effect Two. I wasn't able to 
calm down the situation between the, the two sides. It's great. And I actually caused her race to become extinct. And you didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice because of I, tr I tried so hard to save, and it, uh, she was like, uh, they became extinct, and then she committed suicide by jumping off the stuff. And I was, wow. I was absolutely devastated. I just, I, I sat there just going, you lost, you lost Tally in yeah. two. No, no, in the third one. Okay, in the third one, but because wow. uh, she committed suicide because uh, Tally survived in mine. Yeah, she's, I was absolutely she's, she's all right devastated. Like that. I could. Yeah. I, just, I had to just put the control down and walk away and go make myself cook. And, that, and they're the moments we're talking about, the moments, the moments that make you do something in real life, rather mm. than just like, oh, that's happened in the game. They actually they affect you so much that you change what you're doing at that moment. Like, yeah, I, st I just put my pad down and I went and got yeah. made myself cook. There, <laughs> there have been so many. It's, I it's, could. I was devastated. Going going go to some happier times. Um, the the bow and arrow um, sort of direction everything's got in. Near the end Tomb of this Raider. gen, Tomb Raider, Far Cry, Far Cry yeah. um, Crisis yes. as well. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I, I love absolutely love it. it. Again, they do a really good job of making you feel like you have the skills of Robin Hood, whilst actually making the in-game mechanic pretty mm. easy. Um, Far Cry Three for me, there was there were so many moments where I would stay in the bushes, um, and I would take out a group of people with just the bow and arrow. Like one, two, three, allowing for drop distance and stuff, mm. and it would, I, I would just feel it was my go-to weapon. Exactly. Yeah. yeah throughout, throughout the entire game. Silent, deadly, and just so much fun to play with. <laughs> you go. Exactly. And, <laughs> like I say, allowing for things like like drop and allowing for things like um, line of sight. If someone's walking in and you you aim the perfect shot to land in their head, there were so many moments like that that just made me again just sort of put the controller down on my lap for a second and just sort of. Take it all in. It was it was fantastic. Right, I'm gonna put it on the spot. Okay. Just kind of wrap things up. Okay. Best DLC this generation. Oh wow. Best DLC. <sighs> um. You go first. I'll give it some thought. Undead Nightmare for Red Dead Redemption. Absolutely That's loved it. Very good one. The wave the wave mode stuff and the yeah. car stuff was yeah. really and really the good. Uh, the apocalypse. Yeah, apocalyptic courses. <laughs> I, don't know, I, never, I, never, I never saw one. Does it just part of the DLC? Yeah, yeah. Because I I only ever played it with friends. I never actually saw one of the yeah, one the, of the. You get, you get to cut to a four. Oh, it had had like unlimited um, um, speed, didn't it? It didn't run out of breath or something. Uh, I can't that. No, because that was I mean that was yeah. the worst thing in, in in Red Dead when you when you want to get away from a situation bad. And you're hammering, you're feeling the vibration oh, no. speed up. I had that other choice. Wall, so it wasn't as bad. Oh, right. <laughs> I didn't. I was probably on some They've sort of mule. Dictionary. I'm yeah. on a mule. Over here. <laughs> um, DLC. I didn't buy a lot of DLC. Oh, um, the Missing Link DLC from Deus Ex. Okay. I really, really enjoyed that. Mm. I'm probably just because it was more Deus Ex, and I, I love that game. I played it so much. Mm. But um, Missing Link DLC is it's very cheap now as well. I recommend you pick it up. If you uh, I think a close second for me was uh, Lost in the Damned on GTA 4. Again, I didn't play any GTA yeah, 4 Rockstar DLC. Yeah, Rockstar again. You know, GTA didn't 5. Know how to do the DLC. GTA 5. Um, taking a selfie of myself <laughs> with a with like a, a, a sunny background whilst wearing a Lucia Libre wrestling mask. Mm. There you go. There's another there's another moment, defining moment that mm. sort of makes you sit and wonder how it's come so far. That was that was crazy. That entire game, the amount of, the amount of content, detail in that game yeah, as well. it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. unbelievable. It makes you really curious to see what they're going to do with the new power of the PS4 and mm. and X Bone. X Bone. <laughs> I don't like. That's it, fine. Yeah. They've said that they said that they don't mind the X Bone now. Well, they said that they've accepted the X Bone. Yeah. As right. soon as they bought X Bone dot com, <laughs> I saw that as a go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Right, well, uh, thanks for uh, watching. Um, Leave responses in the comments about your favourite moments. Make sure you check out nerdslayer.com. Yes. Later.